Power. The elder. Ethan. Blake. Shin. Come on, come on, come on. Honey, I cannot believe it is your birthday. Happy birthday to you. To the best man, the only man that I love that has my heart. Happy 50th birthday. I wish you many, many, many more. I love you and it's your birthday. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. I love you. Mwah. Happy birthday, Dad. I want to say that you're the best dad ever and I'm thankful for having you as a dad and I thank you for all the things that you've done for me and love you. Bye. Oh, y'all got to keep the doors rolling. Ethan weighed nine 
buck of money. So she was in labor, the 15th. And I went in, I said, I started thinking about those people lining up at my office. I got to get out of here somewhere. And so she gave me permission. Well, you gave it to me. She I asked for permission to leave. Because I was doing tax all night. It was as fast as they could get in there. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Ethan was the income tax deadline baby. <laughs> and I remember another thing about Ethan. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you all probably remember the boys took the bicycles. They stole the bicycles. Took, took one from Drew, I think. Said, let me befriended him and said, let me, let me ride. Let him, let him ride. He kept riding. <laughs> so I told Ethan, you're going to have to be careful and keep your eyes on your bike. Bought him a new bike. And I said, you're going to have to keep your eyes on your bike and keep up with it. Of course, he, Jojo Merriweather. Yeah, yeah that is it. And uh, they probably remember that. He went up to that five and 10 cent store on Mac Nichols. And uh, he forgot it. They went in the store and came out. And the bike was gone. I said, okay, the next bike you get, you're going to buy it yourself. If you don't buy one, you're going to have to wait until you're grown enough to buy your car. And so uh, he began to tell his mother and I what happened. I said, what happened? He said, he said uh, I, was, I was in the store. We came out. I said, uh, and the boys took it. I said, well, what did they have? They had a iron pipe. <laughs> He said, I said, what they tell you? He said, they said, give it up. <laughs> so I said, I was watching. This is about the same. And I said, you yeah, okay? I said, okay. You don't have a bike. And so it came to me. My wife told me to say, the Lord brought it to me. And I said, Ethan, come here. He came here. I said, now here's what happened to your bike. <laughs> You got careless, yeah. went in the store and turned your back and the boy took it, right? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you think I ought to tell this? Tell it! <laughs> <laughs> Let it be with you. Let it be with you. <laughs> I, started, I started Ethan uh, saving. I started. Uh, uh, what did you do? <laughs> He 
slid up. I said, boy, this boy, I hope this boy hasn't got hung up on drugs. That's right. I said, this boy spent this money. He's got involved in some drugs. When he slid down on that floor. I said, what you, I said, what you do with it? He said, I said, what you do with the money? He said, I bought me a ring. I said, what else? I'm, I'm thinking money. You didn't pay no thousand for a ring. I said, what, what else you doing? Bought me a watch. I started breathing easy and easy. I didn't want him to be on drugs. I spent that money. Now, this is the last one. And I'm going to take my seat. <laughs> in time for Drew, but he should, he should get a little scotch from him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mama got witness to this. You, 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 had your, you had your mama second the emotion on other things. She gonna second this. I bought the full family. No way. <laughs>
give Ethan for his birthday. I'm gonna give him a Mike a L S four sixty L. Thank you for encouraging me in, in the most times that was 
needed and I just love you. You have, and Ethan has always been supportive of everybody in the family. I mean, he's been supportive to my husband and when he had his banquet, everything. My daughter, he's been at her concerts and he's just been there for everybody. And I felt that even on tonight when I had a contract, I said, if I have to be sued, Ethan gonna help us pay us out of this. <laughs> I needed to be here tonight. I needed, to, and I called him and I said, please, please let me out of this. I have to be here tonight for my brother because he's there for us all the time. So I just want to wish you a happy birthday, Ethan. I love you so much. And whenever you need me, I'm here for you. Thank you. First of all, God bless Bishop Shear. God bless Mother Shear. And uh, we're happy for Elder Ethan Shear, the 50th uh, birthday. Happy birthday, Ethan. Uh, well, let me really tell you all about this house. Daddy did make that promise that we could have his house if we go over there, clean up the yard, pick up the trash, all that kind of stuff. Those of you who have any experience with rental property, you know that that is quite a job to try to keep rental property clean. So we would go over there every Saturday and they said, y'all gonna get the rent. So we said, okay, cool. You know, me and Ethan said, all right, cool. We go over here, um, do the work, and say, um, so it's time. Where's the rent, Daddy? How you think I'm paying for y'all tuition? How you think I'm paying? How you think you in that private school? That's where the rent is. Now, you re you reassess that and see that he give us that. Can I get a witness, Ethan? I, I thought I'd clear that point up. Uh, I remember when Ethan uh, was first born, when he first came to the house, of course, in 64, I started school. And so at, uh, when he came in, I was so excited about uh, Ethan coming. I asked my mother, could I hold him? And I held him uh, soon after he had come home from the uh, hospital, and uh, like he tells you, Kiara, he held you when you, I held him when he was little. And, but uh, then he grew up and Ethan was a super character. <laughs> um, uh -huh. My cousin Arlene was here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Arlene used to stay with us. And Mama would make us sit at the table until Ethan got to eat. <laughs> this one day, Ethan, uh, mom had went off, and so me and Arlene got up and uh, went through. It was hot. It was summertime. We wanted to play. And so we were out playing, and then Mama called out. Whenever Mama said, John Drushi! I was in trouble, okay? She called us in the house, and we come in the house, and she said, why did y'all leave Ethan in there? The way he did this. The only thing that stands out the most, Ethan, I remember when Bishop had his um, condition when he went to the hospital. And if you ever wanted to look at a character of a man and see him emulate some things about his dad, and his mother called, if you wanted to see how the church was ran, I remember that was one of those Sundays we had one of the most awesome service that there was. And that was because this is a man who has a genuine heart. His heart is really big. Sometimes he's taken the wrong way because he cares and he loves so hard. 
if you trace the young babies all the way up to a mother in the church, Ethan has a heart for all of us, and that stems from his upbringing. upbringing. And Ethan, I just want to say, really, without crying and getting emotional, I have an opportunity to work with him now. Ethan and I, we just, we, we just, and I'm so glad you married my sister, and I'm going to sit down. I remember when we first met Ethan, and I'm sure Ethan was trying to figure out which one. Oh, I'm sure he was. <laughs> Ethan said, hey, this is my wife's twin sister. And the thing is, Ethan can probably say it with me, I said I would never marry Ethan because we're such good brothers and sisters. Ethan, I love you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I am so proud to be Mrs. Ethan Blake Shoe. I mean, of all the things that I do wear, wearing his name is the thing that I give the most honor to. All right, now. I want to thank his parents because having a child now, it's so important that we raise our children and you want the right way, and you want your children to be with someone that you trust, someone you know will take care of them, yeah. someone you know has their best interest at heart, someone that's God-fearing, someone that just makes the right decisions when it comes to their family. Bishop and Mother Shear, you all have done a remarkable job with Ethan, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I had no idea when I said yes what I was in store for with my husband. And that was one of the best yes that I've ever given in my life. And I don't regret a single day that I've been married to this man. All right. There's, there is there's so much I can say. There's a, a scripture that says, Delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of my heart, your heart. Ethan is definitely one of the desires of my heart. He is everything that I wanted in a man. He is everything that I need in a man. And I just, I do, I thank God for my husband. I mean that, I mean that it was my privilege to spend every dime that I spent on you. And I know that I will get it back from I know that. My husband has done a wonderful job of spoiling me, and I thank God for that. I just, I do, I love him with everything that I have, everything that I am. I love this man. I thank all of you for coming out to celebrate with me, uh, to celebrate his life, because it is worth celebrating. He leaves me speechless. I'm taken by you. I mean, he's just, he, he is just, the Lord, the Lord did this one thing for me. I'll never forget, um, with my sisters and my cousin Tanya and my sister cousin, I'll never forget when we were younger, you know, when girls, we always talk about the man that we'll marry and how it's going to be and what we want to do and all of those things. I thank God that most of the as a child, he gave them to me and my husband. And I thank God that he allowed me to marry the first man that I fell in love with. I thank you. I love you.
<laughs> he always s tells me not to cry. He wants me to toughen up and he encourages me not to be afraid or not to be a big baby. <laughs> he wants me to toughen up when it comes to situations like if I hurt myself. He wants me, he wants me to toughen up. And I'm thankful that he gives me like, he gets me really excited when he tells me that, like, so, yesterday, <laughs> I won the first place in the spelling bee. Same birthday as I do, 
and we celebrate every year with festivities back and forth. Kim is Kim is the one that looks just like her mama. Stand up so they can see Kim. This is my sister Kim. Then I got then my sister Alita is in uh, Birmingham. I mean Montgomery, where in Alabama. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but then I got this sister here that. Um, she said that when we first met, I was trying to figure out which one. Well, I just want to let all of y'all know it wasn't no problem. It wasn't but when I, look, I looked at her, but I could tell the difference. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> now, now, my sister Glenda, oh man, I appreciate her. She allows me let me say this, she allows me to minister to her. I mean, on a serious note. And then she'll take it and say, yeah, okay, Elder. She called me AP and say, Elder, yeah. But then, this is what I really appreciate about her. Later on, if I say, no, nah, no, nah, you ain't gonna do that, she'll say, no, nah, Elder AP, now you just told me. And then, and then she'll keep me in line. I appreciate that because she don't, she get, she could just talk about me behind my back and not say anything. But she helps me stay on just like us. We, we act like brothers and sisters. And I really appreciate her. She's swift on her feet. She reminds me of my mom a lot. She's swift on her feet and she goes and takes care of the stuff. But, uh, you know, I uh, we had to work with her about picking up the phone uh, when we call. Yeah, she's kind of we on picking up the phone. <laughs> but she's getting but she's better than my wife. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh that's the party. Yeah. 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 Now those are these are did I get did I get all my sisters? Who the Sister Applewhite, my girl, Sister Sharon, I love you, sweetheart. Uh, and uh, now, also, I've got a my other my sister from my brother. Y'all got that? Yeah. Karen Clark's here. Yeah, I'm so glad that you're part of our family. I mean it. Uh, you are a beautiful lady, and you're a brilliant singer. Yeah. one time, when you start singing, how do you do all that? <laughs> she said, I, I just, I just start singing and it kind of come out. You know, you know, she act like Michael Jackson. <laughs> but then when she get on stage, Rita Frank, I tell Rita Frank to her face that she can't sing as good as Karen. You can't remember what I said. That's Rita Frank. She can't talk to you. Shh. Yeah. 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 Amen. Thank you, Mama. See, yeah, I told you she got me hooked. That's my girl. <laughs> then I got my niece. And nephew, my nephew Woo! Jay Drew's here. Yeah. That's my man. Yeah. He got that band for me. He got that band for me. Thank you. Graduating. Graduating May 10th. May 10th. Graduating from Wayne State University. My man. Oh, Mary Girl. I'm sorry. Mary Girl Power. That's wonderful, man. May 10th. Yeah. Jay Drew, he's all right. He's, he's so talented, he don't even know what to do with this. I mean it. We, we we talk about you all the time, man. We love you so very much. I mean, I love you too, man. And uh, my niece Kiara here. Oh yeah. I remember when I used to hold Kiara. She was just a little frail, light-skinned thing, and she used to flare her nostrils up at you and do it. She does that now. But let me tell you something. I, it was such a joy to see that you developed into such a beautiful yeah. woman. I knew. I mean, when I was coming in here tonight, I was standing at the door talking, and I saw her over there 
And I said, I said to Brad, I said, who is that fine babe over there? I said, that's Kiara. She's <laughs> and you know, she can see me when we talk about her singing. It's just awesome. It's in my life, uh, my mother has always trained us to be men and to get up and go get it. She put us to work. She made sure that we knew how to do everything almost as she knew how to do. We knew how to wash clothes, clean the house, wash dishes, although I didn't like washing dishes. I don't know, my brother didn't get that. That the reason I didn't wash them dishes because I didn't like it either. <laughs> but my mom has been, she used, my mom is a true woman, a true woman of God. My dad used to work so much sometimes till we didn't get a chance to see him much. And my mom, I remember my mom waking us up oh, to to, so we can see our dad. Because he would be still working, we had to go to bed, and then when we got up, he was already gone. Uh -huh. So uh, she always let us know, your daddy took care of this, your daddy paid the bills, your daddy did all of this. And that, that, yeah, that meant a lot to us. Amen. My mom has always had my back. Yeah. yeah. Amen. I appreciate that. You know, she, she looks out for Ethan. And uh, while my brother's a little jealous, it's all right. I didn't have nothing to do with the order, but I'm glad for it. Amen. Man, I'm so glad for my mom. She's such a special woman. I try to train the young men to treat their mothers with the utmost respect. Your mama says, come, you come when? Now. Right. Uh, my mom used to call me out the window. I, I remember she was not me unconscious. She came, she was calling me. She said she was calling me, I didn't hear her. And so I thought that would be a legitimate excuse for not being there. When I came in, the, house, it was eerily quiet. As I walked in, I looked for someone, and there was nobody there. Then all of a sudden, I said, hey, mama, she said to me, she said, you come when I call you. I said, Mama, I didn't hear you. She said, I don't care. From that time on, I told my friends, I said, listen, we're going to play. But if you hear my mama call, you better tell me so I can go home. <laughs> never forgot that. Because she never called me again and I didn't hear. Amen. So I think it's very important to have strong mothers to raise men. Amen. To my dad. The best dad in the world. The best, do y'all know what a Lexus 460 LS is? Right there. Oh, my, my, my. Oh, my dad. Oh, I didn't do that right then. Give honor and respect to our leader of the bishop, John Shear, chairman of the board of bishops. The best dad in the world. Oh my God. This is a good day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bishop has uh, been the epitome. Of uh, uh, the epitome of what a real father should be. If you want an example of how men, gentlemen, how you should treat your wives and family, he's sitting right here. Yeah. Yeah. My, my dad made sure that his family was taken care of. He worked two or three jobs at a time to make sure his family. Now, he, you would think that we had 10 children in our family. It wasn't but Drew and myself. But he made sure 
we had the top of the line, everything. That's right. And I mean, we went to private schools. We went to, I mean, any, huh? Oh, yeah, anything. My my father made sure it happened. And uh, he, he uh, kept us in line. I remember getting one specific whooping from my dad. And uh, he held my ankle and he had my hand caught in there. And all I could see was the light in the middle of the room. And he beat my behind. And uh, I appreciate him for doing that because uh, it made, partially made me into who I am today. I appreciate you, Dad. You, uh, yeah, anything you need, of course you know that. We got his back. I want y'all to pray for him. Amen. Right. Don't skip it. I got one brother in the world. And uh, I told y'all a story on Tuesday night about my brother. Y'all yeah. remember that story? Yeah, you remember that story with that when the boys were beating me up and you came out yeah, yeah. to a safety nice. belt home? <laughs> he was safety patrol. I came around there with them boys and he was throwing them boys off. Then I got back. Yeah, I, I think I was in kindergarten back then. First grade. And uh, yeah, my brother, my brother has been um, how he is for as long as I can remember. He's always aspired to be at the top. And uh, I mean, when we were, you know, uh, children, he would set up church in the basement. And I was one of his first members <laughs> in the basement over on Sorrento. Yeah. He has always, he was in, in school, there was, there were uh, disruptions from the kids in the school. And the, the administration would call John Shear to come help squash the, the, the squabbles in the school. Uh, my brother has Everything that he's put his hands to has turned into be a phenomenal, great act of God, if you will. I mean, I mean, his church has grown to one of the largest churches in the Church of God in Christ. Worldwide. Worldwide, that's right. His ministry reaches out all over the world in the broadcast and whatever else he has. His, he was a, a put over the youth department for the Church of God in Christ, and when he was put over it, it reached a level that it had never been to before. Amen. And it looks like they're never going to get there again. No, no. No, no. Setting the bar, he's setting it high for everybody. Then when he got over the AIM convention, the AIM convention was out doing the convocation. I'm trying to tell you now, you tell, you stop me when I go wrong. I know that he is, uh, now he has been elected to the general bill of the entire church of God in Christ. On his first try, he came in third place on the 300 votes from the number one vote getter. Now, that says something. The hand of God is on him. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to, listen, I want y'all to do something for me. Hallelujah. Get out of the way. Right. Because it's an avalanche. There's only two things you can do with an avalanche. Get out of the way or get rolled over. And I, I mean it. I, I mean, J. Drew Shear has made things happen. That I mean, there was a time when he was getting his church. He was getting that first church on Southfield. And uh, he had me in the negotiation. That dude said, that white dude said, we not gonna, we don't take your money. I said, man, let's get out of here. This dude, we don't need this dude. And he said, no, man, 
God said I had it. God said I had it. When he said that to me, I said, okay. When somebody tells me, when he tells me that God is going to do it, I move out of the way and I would just wait to see God do it. And didn't he do it? This is a great man and I look, look forward. I know he's my brother. He's, he's quite a bit older than me. But I, I know he's my brother. But, I, you know, if you had a brother like this, you'd be talking about him too. Amen. So I, I'm, I'm sorry I'm talking about my brother. So but, uh, okay, God bless all of you. I think I'm done. Am I done right? Am I done right? No. All right, God bless all of you. And I think I, am I done? Yeah. I think I saved the best for last. Yeah. This woman in red. Don't, don't do that, baby. She, she rubbing her leg right there. Don't do that. This woman in red. You make my temperature rise. Uh. Settle down. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, my wife has been such a tremendous help to me. And uh, I must say I love my wife very much. I said it before that there's only two times I think of you. That's day and night. All right, now. Thank you, sir. Say, oh, say. Huh? You know the next line? No, I'm not going to. <laughs> but I, uh, I really appreciate you. Um, I know it hasn't been. She, she spoke very well about me. I know it hasn't been all, you know, happy, happy, happy all the way through. But I thank God that she stuck there with me, and uh, she given me such a beautiful daughter. And. Uh, I really appreciate you. I love you. Uh, I don't know. I'm not quite sure uh, what I would do without you. I never, I never thought about being without you. And I think that uh, you're gonna meet. You're gonna ride.